this is a trial balance question here. So we've got some uh, current partially prepared trial balance here figures in here. Uh, you've got some amounts here. Uh, you're going to sort of create the, whether they're debits or credits or what have you. Total up then the amounts in uh, the trial balance in after you've added those figures there to the opening or the partially prepared trial balance. Um, it should be quite quick really this one. Um, so you, you should be able to clear this in three minutes. Okay, so let's just leave this over for another minute and then we'll be to the answer. Okay, so this is just a, a trial balance question here. So we've got our, our uh, amounts here. So uh, in terms of uh, VAT owing to HM revenue and customs, so money going out, and then so that'd be a credit. Sales returns, so this is less money available to shareholders, less money to be able to go out, so that's a debit. Yeah, so reduction in the money out item is a debit. And drawings, a reduction in the amount that was available for shareholders as well. So another reduction in the money out item, that's a debit there. So those are the credits and debits in here. And then in terms of our total, so this was that we had a total off with a, a, in our partially completed trial balance, 210,678. And a credit of 208,911. And we added on our debits and added on our credits to give us these totals here. And that balance is there. And that's the end of this, this question. Payments method question. So we've got choose the most appropriate payment method for these situations here, and then decide which ones of these payment methods will not reduce the funds in the balance in the payers bank on the date of payment. Uh, so we've got six marks here, but realistically you should sort of clear that in about uh, two and a half minutes. We'll come back in that at that point.
Okay, so that's time. So this was the answer. Make payment via the internet to purchase office stationery. So that's going to be via a debit card. We're going to buy a debit card. Could have been a credit card on, on that one, really. I, either way, it was basically a card that you'd have to do because we're, we're buying across the internet here uh, for something. You know, they're going to want a, 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 you know, to do, make an instant payment from that point of view. And none of the other ones would have been would have been appropriate. Could have been a debit or a credit card for that one. Make a non-automated low-value payment in person. Okay, so non automated ones, we're not going to go by any other any other system there. So, you know, uh, uh, could have been check on that on, if we've gone on in person, possibly, or debit card or whatever. Uh, but because it's got this non automated amount here, that means that must be cash. That's the one that's not, not automated. Make a payment by post to a credit supplier. So, we're not going to send any cash across by post because that could get you know, lost or stolen in the post. Those, these ones are, are not about you know, standing order. Um, Bank draft, debit card, and check are not, not by post. The only one that could be by post is checks. The only thing you could stuff in an envelope would be check or cash here, and it would be un inappropriate to send cash across to the post. Making regular payments, so notice one regular payments here, of regular amounts to the same recipient. So that's standing order. Really. Uh, now, if it was different payments, um, so if it was regular payments of different amounts to the same recipient, so would, that would be direct debit. So I thought I just added extra extra bits into it. Uh, circle two of the payments below that, that were not reduced funds in the payer's bank account. So this one, standing order, is on the day. You know, it was on the day that we we uh, make the payment. Um, set it up three days in advance. Uh, direct debit's the same same kind of thing, and chaps is is on on, on the day and, and instantaneously as as well. Uh, so you know, uh, so we've got a credit card and check are the ones. So credit card, we would get it at, at some you know, um, at some point in the following. Uh, some point in the, in the month really to, to be then uh, paid so you know, in terms of that, that one it could be anything up to 30 31 days uh, and then the check is you know it has to go through the, the bank clearing system so depend upon branches and, and, and banks as well uh, so that's those those are the two that wouldn't be on on the same day so this is an error uh, question here so we've got uh, some situations here some journals that have been posted here which ones cause uh, an imbalance in the trial balance and which ones don't cause an imbalance in the trial uh, imbalance in the trial balance so um you got four marks for here here and um, probably get that finished in about uh, three minutes come back in three minutes
Okay, so that's coming up to time now. If you haven't finished it, you can spend a little bit more time on this one and pause it, but let's go through the answers. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going through the only the only question that, that you don't really have a technique for in, in the uh, principles of bookkeeping controls uh, unit is the remember what the payments method uh, one question is there. Uh, everything else has has a technique, so I'm going to go through exactly that will mean that you'll you'll always pass and get everything right. So, what I do is I set up what should be the journal and what I did, and when I don't get a number. I just invent it and I actually sort of stick to like hundreds or what have you. Um, yeah, so I, I sort of make them very simple numbers really in here. And when I get the actual number, the other one, then I put them in. And that means that I can sort of see what's going on with the, with the debits and credits really. So here we go. The cash sale has been recorded in the sales and VAT can report only. So I should have gone debit bank 120, credit VAT 20, credit sales 100. So that's what I should have done. This one I say, you know, put some numbers in there. These are the simple numbers uh, that, that we can have here. Um, and what I actually did was this here. So I forgot about the bank one. And so that caused an imbalance. And the reason why I say do it like this is under pressure in the exam here, this will hold up always. Uh, you'll, you'll never make a, a mistake really. Uh, purchase of a new computer is recorded in this office expenses, expenses account. All the entries were correct. So that one was instead of per, der, der, debit the computer, it was actually debit the expense, but it's still 100. And credit the bank 100 there though. Okay, so that one will not cause an imbalance in there. That's an error of principle. Uh, instead of being a, recorded as an asset, it's recorded as, as an, an expense which affects capital and uh, your shareholder capital. Um, so a reduction in the shareholder capital really that's available for them um, rather than an, an asset there. So that's a, an example of an error of principle uh, here. Uh, Back's payments to a credit supplier was debited to the bank account instead of. And it's credited to the purchase purchase ledger uh, and credit to the purchase ledger account. So it should have been debit the purchase ledger account credit bank. Instead, we went debit bank 100, credit purchase ledger control account 100. So an example of reversal of entries. Um, so that, that's that's the error there. But we can see that it will not cause an imbalance. This this um, this journal here, and that's why putting little numbers in there always holds up. The cash payment of 56. We got some numbers in this one. Cash payment of 56 for stationery has been recorded in the cash account as 65. All other entries were correct, so we should have gone debit 56, credit uh, 56, and then we went debit 65, credit 56. So that one will cause an imbalance. So here's an, an error question. Which which one's the error of principle? Uh, these scenarios here, and which one would you record in the journal? Uh, in there. So two marks for this one. Um, let's say a minute and a half. Okay, so that's coming up to time. Uh, so let's go through which ones are the error of principle. So cash cash receiver is recording the that's just an error. error it's just an error that, 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 that won't mean that the balance travel balance won't balance. Here, this one is the one where it's an error of principle because this is an asset here. And office expenses affects the shareholder capital. Really. So there's a there's a changeover between between the uh, the two elements of the accounting equation. Uh, so there's two two terms where, where an error principle might occur. You've gone you, you put one thing that's as as one part of the uh, uh, the accounting equation. You know, one thing is an asset, let's say, and you've it's, it's a, a liability or a capital or what have you. Um, so anything that, that doesn't line up in within its own little section within the account equation. The other one is, is that it's something where you're going against the company's own own policy. So let's say you you use the FIFO method for stock. 
you know, rather than the Avco method for stock, let's say. You know, the company has a policy and, and you go against it. Um, so that's that one here. This is a reversal, uh, a, re a, re a reversal entry in here, or reversal error in here, and that was just again just an, 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 an error of uh, transposition error. So uh, then we go in here. Which one would be in the journal? So this journal is the day book, isn't it? The day books for special journals in, in there, though, uh, sort of non-volume ones. Controlled by the financial controller or the finance director. Brilliant. So this one, reimbursement of petty cash, petty cash day book. Uh, let's go, prompt payment discounts received. Uh, so the discounts received day book. Interest in the bank and the cash book. This one here, irrecoverable debts would be in the journal. So we have a wages control question here. So we've got some information here about the expenditure that's going on in here. Uh, you've got three journals to produce. Yeah, and then you've got some options here in terms of the to fill in the, the, the names really and create the debits and credits. A 12 mark question. Um, now I think you should probably be taking about eight minutes for this question. So we'll come back in eight, eight, eight minutes. Uh, I'm going to go through it and the reason why I'm going to take, take eight minutes uh, is because there's a very specific way that I say to set out the, um, the uh, wages control question which gets you 100% of the marks all the time and, and, and you can never go wrong with it. Um, so eight minutes for this one, uh, see if you follow and do exactly the way that I do it.
sure another two minutes left. Hopefully, should we get them out now? Okay, so that's time on this on this question. Let's now go through how to answer it. Really. And the wage control question is one where you know, we've got 12 marks here, and students often actually get, get nothing uh, on, on this on this question. And the reason why is because they're trying to sort of invent their own little ways of, of uh, coming up with the answers to this one. Um, actually, in this this situation, the exam has been very uh, generous uh, in terms of the way in which they've, they've set this question out because you actually use every number in it. Quite often, um, you, you, the examiner gives you numbers that you don't use uh, in the thing, but you have to have them to create. The actual answer of other ones, but you don't use them in. in you, you're not actually going to put them, put them in there, and that's where students most often go get, get it wrong. So let's just go through the steps. Really. So we, we can always make this get this 100% right <clears throat> all the time. So step one is to create a table here. So in this table, you're going to put total expenses first of all, a little bit, a little bit further down, gross, gross wages, and then net wages in here. So you're going to create these three three lines in here. That's that's the first part of creating this table. You'll be given one of the total expenses, the gross wages or the net wages. You'll only be given one of those ones. So here are our wages expense, which is the total expense in there of that figure. So that was a total figure, and you drop that in. You've now got the other, num other numbers here, and you're going to drop them in there. So you've got employers' expenses, which go above the gross wages to get to the total expense, and employees' expenses, which go below the gross wages to get to the net wages. Here. So you've got income tax here, which is an employee's expense. Employers national insurance, including the title, employers national insurance, employers expense, employees national insurance, employees expense. There could have been pension contributions, employers pension contributions, which would be employers expense, and employees pension contributions with employees expense. We've also got these voluntary deductions here, which are trade union fees, and they are an employees expense. So we drop those into the table here. And so this is what our table now looks like in here. And now we can then, then uh, so we're going to deduct the employer's national insurance off the total expense to get to the gross wages. And then we're going to deduct these employees' expenses to get to the net wages. Yeah, and that's how you create these other two numbers in here. Now, let's say you were given the gross wages instead of the total, ex total expense there, though. Then you put that one in there, you'd put these around, and then you'd you know, add that onto the gross wages to get to the total expenses. Or if you're given the net wages, then you put that in there, and you'd build them up. So that's how you create the, the, all the, the numbers that you need for this for this question. Yeah, is you create a, first of all you create a table in there, and you'll only be given one of these these three. Then you'll be given these figures here, and you put them in the table in the right right place, and then you build the numbers. Up there. Now students, that, that is fairly, you know, issue number one that students do. They try and create their own equations in their head, and they don't do that. Uh, it just, just makes life hard. Uh, no, no point in that one. Yeah. Right, okay, so do we go to the answers Answers now? No, we don't, don't go to the answers straight, straight away. No, we don't. We now create a set of journals in here. So from this table up here, we create our journal. So the first one is we create the, the wages control uh, credit journal here. So debit wages expense. 
So that's how our wages expense hits. And you see those wages expenses here just sort of hanging out, sort of saying, oh, please use me in the answer. No, you're not going to use it in the answer. Uh, you've got to go debit wages expense, credit wages control. Unless the answer was actually asking you, could you, you know, put in whatever the wage, create the wages expense journal, uh, in which case it would be debit wages expense, credit wages control. So that's that journal. Yeah. Then we create the HMRC, you know, the, the payment to the, uh, for the taxes journal here, yeah, which is the income tax, employers national insurance and employers national insurance. And you can see we're going debit wages control, credit credit that uh, that control account. And here's the trade union one, debit that wage control, credit that. Uh, control account and then debit this one then, then we're going to pay the actual wages so we're going to debit the wages control and we're going to uh, pay off the bank now we could actually these could be payments as well really so we could these this could be just a payment out in terms of in terms of to, to hmrc uh, so we, we've created now our our journals do we now go and put the answers in no we don't go and put the answers in uh, we now produce our t accounts for the wages control here's the wages control take out here put the numbers in from your journals in there and check that it balances. If it balances now, so it, so that the, the carry down is zero, then you know you're, you're right. You've got the right figures here. And these are then your journals. And now you drop them in to the answer. And there's the answer there. Okay, so that's there. That's how to do this, this uh, wages control question. And also how to get 12 out of 12 every time without ever going wrong. Irrecoverable debts question. So we've got an irrecoverable debts question here. This is the balance in the sales ledger in here. Uh, they've ceased trading, uh, so you now you know you're, uh, you're, you're not going to have uh, the owing the amount that's outstanding. Uh, so you're not going to get anything back in there. Create the journal that's going to go in the journal. Uh, this is a six mark question. Uh, probably should take you about three minutes. So we'll come back in three minutes. Okay, so that's time. So let's now go into uh, this question here. How, how, would you, how would you do it? Really? So you've got the amount here. So this is the sales ledger account here. So the first thing that you do is you create the sales ledger account that will be 
here. So these are the figures that we've got in so far in terms of our, our debits and our credits in here. And that's the balance uh, that we would we would have at this point if they hadn't been um, gone into liquidation. But because they have, they, we're not going to get any amount sold in, so the carry down is now going to be zero. So what is going to be the, the journal that's going to come in there? Well, we have to have a credit 1752 uh, of irrecoverable uh, debt, essentially, in, in there. So that's, that's not, we're not going to have, have that there. So we're going to have a, a reduction or credit to the sales ledger control account, because this is the sales ledger. figure. It's got to be record of always reconciled to the sales ledger control account. So we're going to go credit 1752. And the sales edge control account in here. Now I've just put the figures into the debits and credits ones so they just know where, where they are. So that's that's our first part there. Yeah, credit, sales edge control account here. Notice as well that, that sometimes you know, trade receivables uh, control account, sometimes sales ledger control account, uh, sometimes debtors account, you know, whatever, whatever it would be. Uh, same same thing. Now uh, what we then got is this one says that we've got VAT within it in here. And so the net, so what you do then at this point here is, is create the net and the VAT independent of this uh, set 1752. So I've gone here and created the, the, um, the net as 1752 divided by 1.2, you know, so under, divided by 120%. Uh, to get to the net and then I've multiplied that by 20% to create the VAT and then I've added them both together and checked that they equal the 1752. Yeah, so that's how I created the the, the, uh, the net and the VAT figures and then checked my works so that I would never make a, make a silly mistake in there. So the VAT you're going to get back from HMRC so that's going to be an increase in, in uh, 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 so money into us so that's going to be a debit you know? so we're going to get that back in there but then the, all, the, the amount that's left over, the 1460, is the amount that we, we can't get back uh, from, from anywhere, anywhere. That's going to be a, a reduction in the money available for our shareholders. So a reduction in the share capital, reduction in the money out item, is a debit 1460. So that's the answer to this question. You know, create the T account and, that, and then set the carry down to zero. And what has to come into that? Well, uh, don't try and just sort of do this as a little equation. Uh, or a little sort of maths sort of thing there. No, that's not that's not accountancy. That's maths. Uh, set your T account out. Put the carry down as equal to zero, and then work out what the figure is that has to go in there to create that. Create that map. That's the answer to this question. Opening journal question. So this is a four mark question, but really you only you only need to do this in a minute and a half. Really, um, just from from this partially created journal, complete the journal as which ones are debits and which ones are credits. Minute and a half, and let's get it done. Okay, so just just a, a, a very cheap set of marks really available to you. Those four marks, it's, you don't really need to spend the time much on that one. So cash at the bank, so that's a money in item, so it's a debit. Uh, capital is, is money out money out item to the shareholders at some point in the future, so money out item uh, is credit. Computer equipment, uh, money in item, you know, it's going to be used to create money in the future, uh, so that's a debit. All from the bank, money going out to the bank in the future, that's a credit. So this is a VAT control account question here. You got some entries from various daybook questions. Uh, these things wouldn't, wouldn't be sort of appearing in the um, in the books uh, that you will tend to have for uh, principles of book and controls unit. They'll be, coming, be done in the uh, business transactions unit, so uh, or introduction to bookkeeping uh, unit. And so, I mean, just sort of 
put in these ones, sorry about the debits and credits in there. And then over here, we have a VAT control account uh, balance uh, question really. So this is 10 marks in here. Um, you should probably knock this out in about five minutes. So we'll come back into it in five minutes. So there's one minute left now. Okay, so that's time. Let's go through the answer. So um, in terms of in terms of the answer, then let's just go through the debits and credits really in here and how the journals have been produced. So I quite like this this opening bit because it's amount owing from HM Revenue and Customs. So amounts owed 
um, would be a credit and that's owing from them means that the HM revenue and customs owe you the money uh, so it's uh, debit 2055 and uh, that's because that's money in item now I really like this because anybody who uses this dead click goes oh VAT is liability and then drops into credit credit here and so the exam is deliberately sort of setting out uh, owing uh, as, as, a, as a debit and does the same in terms of bank uh, and puts an overdraft after it uh, so the dead clickers go for debit and it really is a credit okay so that's uh, amount owing debit for that one total in the sales uh, day book in here so it would be debit trade receivables control account uh, credit sales credit VAT amount owing to uh, HMRC on the sales so that's credit there in the sales returns day book uh, so it, that one is a credit uh, trade receivables control account yeah, and debit uh, sales return debit uh, VAT total in the purchases day book uh, so that is uh, debit purchases debit VAT credit trade and um, trade payables control account total in the discounts allowed day book right? so this is a discounts allowed so it's debit uh, discounts allowed which is an expense reduction in the amounts available for shareholders reduction in money and money out items so debit debit VAT credit discounts allowed uh, oh sorry credit uh, trade receivables control account so debit discounts allowed debit VAT credit uh, discounts uh, trade receivables control account and then we've got the VATs and the discounts received on here so a discount received is an increase in the money the money available for shareholders to be paid in the future so credit discounts received credit uh, VAT debit trade uh, purchases control uh, trade payables control account and the VAT in the cash book so on cash sales so debit bank credit uh, sales credit VAT yeah, so it's the VAT on the sale uh, that, that we've received and then the VAT ref refund received so payments in so debit bank credit VAT in the control account so that's credit yeah, so debit credit debit 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 credit for credit right okay so that's the first part of that one and then the second one is at the end of July the VAT control account has has these um, these debit entries and these credit entries following transactions have not been yet recorded so VAT told in the purchases returns date box so purchase returns so that would be uh, if we're going for purchase returns debit uh, the trade payables control account because we don't we're no longer going to have to pay that okay? then um, credit purchases returns and credit VAT so that one is a credit in here and then VAT on the irrecoverable debt so it's credit the trade receivables uh, trade receivables control account here yeah, so credit trade receivables control account debit uh, irrecoverable debt expense debit VAT on that, that amount as well so there's the into there those are the total of those two columns in there so that means that must be the, the carried down figure in here and then you've got to be careful really in terms of looking at What's the balance brought down? So they've gone balance brought down rather than carry down in here. Carry down would be debit, but brought down is credit in there. Um, if they also put in debt, if they put in the the, the, the month uh, day, you know, it was like let's say, say it was October, and and what would be the balance on the 31st of October? It would be the carry down figure, and if it was the 1st of November, it would be the brought down figure. So that is the VAT control account question, and the different ways that it could have gone in terms of trying to get this this answer here. Oh, and of course it was four, four, five, one, eight. In the end. So reconciliation of the sales ledger to the sales ledger control account uh, question here. So you've got uh, sales ledger here, some accounts here, um, balance it and work out the difference. And then you've got some differences between. You're now trying to work out what is the reason for the differences between the sales ledger and the sales ledger control account. And it's four marks this one, and I do think you'll use up the full four four minutes if. Um, if you do it in a particular way that, that I think you should do it. Um, so we'll come back in four minutes time.
Okay, so that's time. So what we're now going to do is we're going to go through the through the answer here. Uh, so we've got a sales ledger here, and what you'll see is, is in this, there's, a, there's a credit balance in the sales ledger. So whenever you see this this kind of thing about the sales ledger, just be mindful that there probably will be, a, or a purchase ledger, there'll be an account that'll be on the other side. That's just a little sort of check by the examiner just to see whether you can understand the difference between debits and credits. Okay, so the total of those balance was 44,563, and so those three added together minus that. Yeah. And then this is the balance on the sales ledger control account. Here, so you see the difference is 1,455. Now, what we now have is then in, over here is the reasons to explain the differences. And the way to do this is to, first of all, line, you know, this is the difference here. Okay. And then you reverse out the journal. So let's just go through and reverse out the journals. Okay. So goods returned entered twice in the customer's ledger. So that would be credit when we're doing the journal in there. So we're going to debit this out. So it's debit now twice from the sales ledger and debit once from the sales ledger control account. Okay, so we don't debit it there, and then you sort of, so we're gonna reverse out that journal and then see if they're the same. So they're not the same, they're, they're, so it's definitely, so it's not the first one. In the second one, discounts allowed, so it would be a discounts allowed, so it'd be credit the uh, sales ledger control account. And uh, so we're gonna, so they were not in, they were not entered in the sales ledger control account, but they were entered in the sales ledger. So to reverse it out, we're gonna have to go debit the sales ledger, nothing in the sales ledger control account, and does it the same? No, so it's not that one. Okay, let's do the third one then. Goods sold were entered twice in the customer's account. So, so we went debit uh, the sales ledger twice and credit the sales ledger control once. So we're gonna reverse it out by crediting them. So we're gonna reverse it out, credit the sales ledger twice, De debit, uh, credit the sales ledger control account once. And you can see now that, that, that once we reverse that out, it's the same. So this one is one of them in number three. Goods returned were not entered in the sales ledger control account. So goods returned would be credit the sales ledger control account and credit the sales ledger. So we're going to reverse it out by debiting the sales ledger. Wasn't entered in the sales ledger control account, so nothing in there. So debit the sales ledger. And so it's not there. They're not the same. And then number five, the irrecoverable debts uh, written off were entered twice in the sales ledger control account. So, so it would be credit sales ledger control account is the original journal. So we're going to debit to reverse it. So we're going to debit the sales ledger control account twice debit the sales ledger once and you see that's the same so that is the answer yeah, so it's really that one Give me that one as well and then the last one checks received twice in the customer's account in the sales ledger so check received so it will be credit the sales ledger and credit the sales ledger control account was twice in the sales ledger so we're going to reverse it out we're going to debit it so debit that one twice and credit that one uh, and you can see that one's not the same so let's see that's number six so 
uh, so oh, this is not that one. So this one is then, then three and five. And how you go about it, this is why I think you, you'd use the full full time on this question is maybe you can go a bit more a bit over uh, is that you would need to reverse out each of the journals and that now in terms of what amounts to be used well this was the difference amounts here so you could so you can actually come up with the, with the actual amounts really in there if there's no amounts given uh, it's just saying one's bigger than the other then just come up with a figure you know make it a hundred pound difference and then then do the reversals like, like that that's 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 how you do this question it's a bit fiddly um, and actually quite long-winded. Well, there's a lot. Well, actually, so you've, got, you've got sort of uh, six journals to think about and reverse out for two marks. So, yeah, but, it, but we get our time elsewhere in the, in the exam uh, to make up for that one. So that's the answer for this sales ledger, uh, sales ledger reconciliation question. The purchase ledger control account question in here. You've got some descriptions here about things that have happened. In there, uh, you've got some options to put in here and the amounts. Uh, you should record a kind of transactions the purchase ledger control account to show the balance is carried down. Uh, position in July. Uh, you probably take you two minutes to do that one, so I'll come back in two minutes. So that's coming up to time now. Let's, uh, let's do this. Answer this question. So um, within a, uh, your your T accounts, really, the descriptor is the other account. So it's the other side of the account. So payments made by check in here is going to be then debit the purchase ledger control account and then credit the bank account. So that's why the bank account, that's the descriptor that goes in there, and that will be the two five one nine. No, Two nine one five one two, in here. Uh, the balance brought down is that figure there. Um, now it's balance owing at the first of July. So we've got balance brought down in here. The uh, first of July is uh, brought down because uh, it's uh, during the July. Uh, three three eight six one seven, in here. Uh, goods purchased. So goods purchased here would be uh, debit purchases, credit purchase ledger control account. It should really say purchase uh, transactions with credit suppliers. So these are with credits with credit credit suppliers. It didn't have a goods purchase for cash, which would be one way of making this question a little bit harder. And that would be better to have a goods purchase for cash in there than just had it just with supply and take out the credit supplies and that, and then you'll see whether, whether you'd uh, fall for the trick of actually including it within it. Uh, but there we go, goods purchased, um, uh, purchases, debit purchases, credit purchase and control account. And then we've got goods returned. So uh, debit, the purchase and control account, uh, credit purchase returns. And the reason why it's credit purchase returns, it's more money available for the shareholders. Shareholders are money money out item, and therefore is a, a, a credit because uh, it increases the money out item. Now it's been very generous this question because really, it shows the balance is carried down in here, and so it's carried down, uh, which, and so the balance is uh, carried down out here. Those those are the debit sides in here. These are the credit sides in there. So the amount, the figures that you sort of add those two columns up. Calculate the, the difference between them, which go on the smaller side in here, and then retotal these together that one. if they're the same then you know that that's the right figure and so that's what's checking your work is you know do it do, do your two two um question rather than just do the question twice you know just set up your question in a way that you know that that's the right answer that's the balance carried down how could this question have been changed 
And they could have said, show the balances on the 31st of July. That would have been the balance carried down figure. And then if we have said for the, the, you know, the period of uh, the month of July, uh, that would have been the better, better sort of question. And alternatively, it could have said, show the balances on the 1st of, of August, in which case that would have been the balance brought down figure. I mean, what about what the brought down figure over here? I mean, that, that would have been uh, quite, a, quite a good way of, of making it, of doing it there. So you always be careful a little bit with the, with the dates in terms of what what, uh, what what is it going for, carry down or brought down. Okay. Um, and that's the end of this question. So this is a bank reconciliation question in here. Uh, you've got a bank statement here and you've got a cash book here. Uh, and it says, uh, Check the bank statement against the cash book and enter any transactions in the, into the cash book as needed, and then balance down uh, the cash book uh, and also do the brought down as well on the 1st of June. So, do that. Now, within the original uh, one, because this is off the AUT website in here, there is this number here, um, which I think is just an error actually. So, I'm going to cover that up. It doesn't really exist anything. Um, if anyone knows what it, what it possibly is, because it, it can't be, it's not the totals of any, any numbers in here. I mean, that, that is the total of all of those numbers there. I don't know what it, is. Yeah, no, no. it doesn't actually sort of fit anything. It's not in the answers either. It looks like just an error, really. Uh, leave a comment if you have a clue what, what on earth that, that particular number is there. Uh, but I'm going to cover it up because um, it's got nothing to do with the, with the actual uh, answer to this question. Um, now, it's a 10 mark question in here. And what you really need to do on this question is that you need to, although you're going to put the figures in, you actually need to do a full bank reconciliation because that allows you to check your work. So do the full bank reconciliation. Uh, you'll probably get this done in about... Ooh, so eight minutes as so we'll come back in eight minutes and, and do the answer
Okay, so you should be halfway through by now. Uh, hopefully, you should have um, cleared a, a fair bit of it. And another four minutes to go. Though. So you've got a minute left. Now remember on this one, although it's sort of just saying uh, cash book balances, you want to do a full bank reconciliation here because that allows you to check your work. So just you know, if you haven't, if you if you feel like you're sort of skipping ahead, uh, don't make sure you, you do that full full cash book uh, recon or the bank bank balance balance reconciliation, and then you can sort of uh, see whether you got the answer right or not. So that's 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 time. Uh, so let's go through through uh, this bank reconciliation here. Now, in in real life, the first step of a bank reconciliation is to reconcile the brought forward balances in here. Uh, so you reconcile this one here. Now remember, it's done as a credit, but that's from the bank's perspective. Um, it's done as a credit, and that's from the bank's perspective. So it's going to be a debit for you. So this debit here is the equivalent of this debit. This this credit here. Flip it around, it's actually a debit. Uh, no. So let's go through. What, but in, in an exam, the first thing that you do is you tick off all of the ones here. Uh, and the reason why we do that first of all is because it just clears the potential items that could be the difference between the two the two figures here. So we're not going through all of these different ones, but we're starting to look at the 707. Uh, maybe the 209, some, some kind of combinations of, of things there, and uh, we don't really need to do that. Uh, if we clear them, clear these uh, items off here, these things that are in the cash book that are also in the bank statement, clear them first, we now know that the reconciliation of the portfolio balance is you know, one of these things. Now, why don't they give you the, the reconciliation of the, or the previous uh, period's uh, bank reconciliation to be able to sort of just um, you know, tick off whichever one of the items were? Because that would make it a bit of a rubbish question, really. So, um, in real life, you'd, you'd have it. So you'd actually reconcile the both four balances first. Uh, in the exam, you don't have that. So you first of all, you do uh, is to tick off all the cash book items that you've got to the bank statement. Tick them off. Right. So we've done that first of all. 
And then we're going to see what the, the difference is between these two figures here. And so the difference between these two figures is 698, and a debit of 698. And that means that that item there in the previous month was an outstanding lodgement. So in the previous month's bank reconciliation, that was an outstanding lodgement. It's in the previous month's cash book, so we wouldn't put it in again. In there, so that's the, the difference. So we tick that one off. All of these, all of these items in red or green, they're all in the cash book. And now we've got these items here, these items on the bank statement, and they're missing from the cash book. So we're going to restate the cash book by putting these items in. So this here paid in, so it's a debit. There, the bank interest paid in is a debit. This item here paid out is a credit in here. This one is the mystery item, which is just an error within the within the system. So that that comes out. It's just I don't know what that, that is. Leave a leave a comment if anybody has a clue what what this what this point is. Uh, it's not, it's not not in there. So take that out uh, and let me go through and just just uh, get rid of it. Here, the annoying mystery item. Because a confusing gift from AAT. And so the total of this column, eight three eight two. Total of this column, nine five one zero. So the carry down on this side now is uh, here. We go. We got our. our debit figure here now so it says cash book balance carried down at 31st of May here so the carry down at 31st of May is going to be on this side and then they're brought down on the 1st of June so in terms of the dates here this will be the 31st of May let me finish this off I don't know why that's coming up there it's annoying go away 31st of May there and then 1st of June here is the brought down uh, which is going to be 1128 there and so that's the answer now do we stop there no we definitely don't stop there because what you can do here in this thing is you can actually check your work and you can make sure that this is right so we've got a bank statement here a bank bank you know, this is which is 19 and credit in the bank the bank statement here we've got outstanding lodgements do we have anything on here that isn't appear in the bank statement well those ones have been moved across so they're, they're already in the bank statement but there's nothing else in this cash book on this we've got no outstanding lodgements so nothing on the debit side of the cash book uh, which would be outstanding lodgements we've got none of those ones have we got anything over here well that was the item that was brought over there so we have got these two items here which are unpresented checks so minus the unpresented checks you know, which are missing from the bank statement so you know payments that are missing from the bank statement so we've got 19 pounds debit in the bank statement add on the outstanding lodgements which is zero take off the unpresented checks and there we have the uh, for the cash book that figure there credit 1128 and here we've got our, well, our credit 1128 as a brought down balance because that's the real balance in here in there. so we can see that those two are the same number and we reconciled our bank statement here to our cash book so we know that this is absolutely right and this is why I know that this this non this figure here is nothing to do with the exam in question here because I can reconcile those ones now slightly annoyingly is I could have sort of said well this is an outstanding lodgement uh, in here and so but, but what on earth what on earth is it it's just it's just a scruffy bit of the, the exam um don't quite know what, what that is and you just have to roll with it um they correct it if, if they did made that much of a howler within the exam um but as if you, if you actually know what it, what it what it means put it in the comments and i'll redo the, redo the question and that's a bank reconciliation thing here so we've got what, four steps in here one is tick all of the cash book to the bank statement Two, reconcile the brought four balances. Three, restate the cash book. Yes, restate the cash book balance. Four, which is missing from, missing from the question here, is do the bank reconciliation. And by doing step four here, if you had made an error, you could go back and correct it. That's a bank reconciliation question. That's how to get 100% all the time. This is a bank reconciliation question. Uh, six marks. So you're probably going to clear this in, in four minutes. Um, what's happening in here in our four four stage um, sort of method of doing the bank statement you know, is that we've um, we ticked all of our items from the cash book to the bank statement, so we ticked them all, all off there. We've reconciled the brought forward balances, and we've adjusted the cash book uh, for any items that are on the bank statement that aren't in the cash book. So what we've got left now then really is the actual final stage where you're doing the bank reconciliation. So under here we've got the debit side of the cash book here. And we've got an item here that isn't appearing in the bank statement and the credit side of the cash book here 
and this item that isn't in, appearing in the in the cash in the bank statement and here. So we'll complete the bank reconciliation, then total down the amounts of the cash book to work out the carry down uh, figure. Uh, and here, what the carry down figure is, uh, they'll make sure that it's the same as the the bank reconciliation and provide the bank total uh, columns in there. So four minutes for this one. Um, back on. So that should be our time then. So let's go through through this one here. So this was the final stage of a, of a four stage bank reconciliation where we've, we've already done the reconciliation of the brought four balances between the bank statement and the um, and the uh, cash book here. So we had our bank statement showing the opening balance of 3518 and here we had this 353921 here. So there would have been a difference in the bank statement that would have been responsible for that, that amount there. We've ticked across the cash book, all, all of these various sort of uh, items here, uh, into the bank statement here. Uh, anything that was on the bank that was on the bank statement that wasn't in the cash book, we've adjusted our cash book for. And now we're just in the last bit where we've got these two items here. So this is the debit side. So these are outstanding lodgements. Here, so here's our balance for the bank statement. Here, there's our outstanding lodgements which we add on. Here, here's our uh, unpresented checks. Now I put these as a minus, you'd put this just as a normal, but I put this as a minus just to show that we actually deduct off our, our unpresented checks in here to get to the balance as per the cash book in here, 70037. And then it's sort of saying check the amount really, and what it basically means is it's just come up with a carry down, the carry down figure in here. So uh, here is our uh, totals of this, this column here, 13,573. The total of this column here is 6,536. So our cash carried down to get them to the total figures to be the same as 7037. Add them together, make sure the totals are the same again. That's checking your work. That makes sure that we, we've got them right. And if, it was, if they weren't the same, then we know that I've just made a, a mistake in terms of somewhere along the lines into the calculator and can redo it. 
So we've got this carry down figure that goes into there, and the total of the line columns in here. And it's just sort of checking that you've you've uh, you've basically done the to balanced off your accounts correctly. Uh, it goes into into there. Um, and now they could have said uh, they want the figure at the at the 30 postage line, which would be a carry down figure as a credit in there. Um, if it was the figure at the 1st of August, then it would be a, a, a balanced down figure uh, as a debit. Uh, that's the answer to that question. This is a bank reconciliation and it's for eight marks in here. And what you have to do is you've got the bank statement here and you've got the cash book here. Identify which two transactions have caused a difference in the opening balance. Then you're going to identify an outstanding lodgement and an unpresented check. Now the big trick within the within all bank reconciliation questions within the exam is that it only asks you to do a small part of the bank reconciliation, but you'll see that there's there's of the full set of marks here. There's eight marks here for this this thing here. And what the exam is doing is to see whether you will do a full bank reconciliation or whether you'll just try and clip little bits out of it and try and shortcut the exam. You've got the time to do it, and so you can have a bit of a guess and then sort of you'll know, be be out. Um, in sort of you know, a third of the time, whatever, uh, or you could do the job properly, do the full bank reconciliation, and and then you'll have all the answers to drop into the questions. And also as well, you'll know that know whether you've made a mistake or not at any point in here. So um, what you're going to do is, uh, is you're going to do the full bank reconciliations. It should take you about seven minutes. So we're going to come back in seven minutes here. Do the full bank reconciliation from this, and then once you've got those figures, drop the numbers in that, that come out from the bank reconciliation with a sort of four-step approach to it. Um, and I'll see you in seven minutes time.
Okay, so that's time. Now the trick within the all within the all bank set reconciliation questions within the exam really, unless you're given it's like a one mark question and you've given every, absolutely everything, is to do the full bank reconciliation. So in this first part here, so it's saying, well, what are the two transactions causing the difference in the opening, opening balance? And the hope from the examiner's point of view there is that you'll try and start to just do that that element of the bank reconciliation, dump a load of time into it, uh, and then and then sort of not, not get it right either, start guessing. So, but we we don't do that way. What we do is we do the full ticking off exercise. We tick all of the cash book to the bank statement, and, there, and, we've then, and then what we've then done is we've cleared all these items here, and all we've now got left is five items left. Yeah. Now the balance within the from the bank statement is three thousand four hundred eighteen in credit, and that's the credit from the bank point of view. So from the bank's point of view, it's credit, but from your point of view, it's it's debit. So three thousand four hundred eighteen debit in the bank statement. In the cash book, it's debit. 3,152. So the difference is a credit of 266 that's got to appear in the bank statement somewhere. Now, how do we get that up? We've got, we haven't got to, those two are the small items here, and they don't equal 266, so they can't be those two. There. So you're now going to add in something that's going to go uh, a debit uh, that we're getting in, uh, and taking off a credit, and it happens to be those two there. So the answer in the first bit then is uh, it's that check there for that that one, and this uh, paid in uh, amount there from Wilmot Wares as well. So those are the, those are the two uh, of this first bit in here. But the important part was to tick off. Now the great thing is, is and, and what we know we ticked off here, we've now just got our outstanding lodgements here. here. Uh, uh, one item that's left over here on the debit side is King Cranes. That's not appeared in the bank statement yet, so it's an outstanding lodgement. And our one item on the credit side, which hasn't appeared in the cash in the bank statement yet, is this LMRC uh, check here. And there's a check number there, so that's outstanding checks. So we've got those figures in there. Now we add on the outstanding lodgements and we subtract the, uh, the, the outstanding checks. Yeah. Now, do we stop there? Um, well, no, we, we don't because we can, we can check our work completely in here. So we can come over here and what we can do is we can clear off those two items there, take them out from the, from the uh, thing here. And now what we can do is we've got these items here, one, two, three. And then that would be re in the, in the cash book. So we're going to put redo the cash book. So, uh, so there's the amount, there's the balances so far. We put those items in to here uh, to redo the cash book. To redo the cash book. So those are the new totals in the cash book. There's the cu cu the carry down figure. So the new total figure would be, be uh, 10,605. But I'm just doing it in, in my notes from here. So the new balance here really is a carry down of 627 
brought down of, of 620, sorry, carried down 627 credit, brought down 627 debit. So it's the debit figure that we're after here. I've got a credit figure in the bank statement here, which is really a debit figure from the company's perspective. So I've got debit 588 starting with there. I add on the outstanding lodgement, I take off the unpresented check. Yeah, this gives me, per the cash book, 627 debit in here, and the brought forward figure down in the cash book, 627 debit. Now I know then that I've reconciled the question. This, I then know that every single thing that I've done in this, in this question is absolutely right, because I've done the full bank reconciliation here. And so you can see in terms of the time that it took, it took an extra couple of minutes uh, on top of it, but I knew it was right. I had the time because I had eight minutes, eight marks for this for this question in here. Um, I didn't waste any time uh, trying to sort of shortcut this call thing. And, and throughout the, all of the uh, principles of business control unit, really, uh, all the all the uh, bookkeeping controls unit, all that the examiner really has available to them to try and get uh, for students to fail is to see whether you'll shortcut the the approach. And that's that's it really. So uh, don't do the full bank reconciliation. You've got the time to do it. Um, it's a fun exercise anyway, um, and, and that's how you complete this question. So this is a suspense count question here. You've got a suspense count that's been opened with a, with a balance of 180. Don't know whether it's debit or credit. Uh, you've got an error identified, uh, error has been notified below, been made in the general ledger from an incorrectly totaled net column in the sales daybook. So here you've got uh, total net, total VAT and net in the sales daybook here. And what's been posted to the general ledger is uh, 2694 to the trade receivables control account. Four, 449 to the VAT control account and 245 to the sales account. Uh, record the journals uh, to remove the incorrect entry, record the correct entry and remove the suspense account balance. Uh, and then you've got three boxes to fill in, or three ones available if you, if you want to, if you want to use those or not, and there's your options in terms of your accounts. Uh, it's six marks um, and I think you'll probably clear this in four minutes. So we'll come back in four minutes.
that's time. So let's go through through this here. Um, now you always have to be a bit mindful as well within these error questions because sometimes you might be removing, removing the entire journal and then putting it in. Um, but this one seems to be looking for a bit of a net difference kind of kind of one where, where we're just going to remove part of the journal. So. First of all, just just check and let's see what we've actually added, added up here. We've sort of added those up, up here, these columns in here, and they should have been this, this, and this here. So it should have been that that amount uh, there. So that one's right, that one's right. This one is wrong. What we've actually posted is this here. So the first step in in, in this sort of a suspense count question is is what 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 um have you done and what should you have done? So this is what we should have done. And this is what we have done. And so what that means is that our our suspense account then must be 100, 180 pounds debit because we should have posted uh, credit 2245. Instead we posted credit 2425. So that to, to make that those that trial balance balance, we must have a suspense account of 180 debit. In there. So we know that so it's clear that the suspense account is going to have to be 180 credit. This one says then to general to remove the correct the incorrect entry in here. Uh, now it's that's going to be the, this is the incorrect one here, so we're going to go debit sales because we went, we have posted credit sales, so we're going to reverse that out debit sales the two four two five, and then put general to post the correct entry, and it would be credit two two four five. Now the thing is you have to sort of be a bit mindful here uh, about what it could be because there might be um, three sort of uh, sort of rows in this here, which would be to reverse out the whole of your initial entry. And actually, we reverse the whole initial entry plus the suspense account, and then just post the new one. And in real life, what you would actually do is you would reverse out the whole of the incorrect journal, and then you'd repost it correctly, really. And the reason for that is it's much easier to follow things through uh, as an audit trail through your your finance system. So you wouldn't actually really post like this in real life. You take the entire this whole journal out plus the suspense account, and then you would just post that whole journal correctly. And that's how you would do it in, in real life. And sometimes you might you might be asked to do that in the exam. And uh, sometimes you, you're asked to do it like this one, which is just one one little part of it, uh, really. In there, and you just have to basically roll with whatever you whatever you see in front of the exam. There's no there's no um no sort of uh, position how it how it's going to you know you know it's going to be. Um, so that's the end of this suspense count question. This is an errors question here. So you've got uh, an error that's been up here. Uh, you're going to Produce the journal to remove the incorrect errors, and then produce the journal to create the correct errors. Um, actually, no, it's it's a there's a lot of marks in this one. Eight, eight marks for this this question. However, really, you should get this cleared in in uh, probably two minutes at the most. So, uh, come back here in two minutes.
Okay, so let's just go through this one now. So what we've had here then is we've got a uh, it says that uh, have been reversed. So before we do any kind of error question, all you have to do is write out what you should have done, what should you have posted, and what have you have posted. And so all that this this question was really was just recognising that a reversal of error, a reversal of, of, of entries error is. This is what we should have done, and we've done the opposite way around. So instead of going debit drawings 45. You're on credit drawings 45 instead of going credit cash 45 we're on debit cash 45 so that's why that's all that you do first of all is put down what you should have done then you put down what you have done here so a reversal of entries um, error so it's the opposite way around yeah right and that's because our, our solid base before we start our questions right so the journal to remove the incorrect error entry is the journal to remove this one so if you've gone credit drawings we need to go debit drawings if you've gone credit debit cash we need to go credit cash so that's the first part and then in general to record the correct entries is put in what we should have done, debit drawings, credit cash. And that's the answer to this question. This is a, a sort of a, a T accounts balancing down question really. So you've got uh, uh, some journals here which are correct now. And then you're going to put them into the T accounts for the office furniture and suspense accounts. Yeah. Um, carry down, uh, work out what the uh, balance carry down figure in the, is in the office, office furniture account really. Uh, totally up, that kind of thing. Um, it should take you realistically three minutes, so I'll come back in three minutes. Okay, so this question's only just a just about about, about T accounts really. So uh, let's just go through this one here. So here's our office furniture T account here. We post the journals. Now the only thing you need to get right here really is is that when we post our journal here, so this is the debit the office furniture, and the the, the name when we go credit suspense here, so the credit suspense we, we put the other account name in here. So we're going credit as suspense. I'm sorry, debit suspense with this seven. 1764. So we put debit office furniture. So we've put the other side here, and then here is the suspense in here. So these here, here are the same journal. Now, in real life as well, this would have a little journal number in front of it. Now, let's say this was journal number one in here, it would have a little one in front of it, and ones so that you just could be able to track it. Um, 
doesn't put journal numbers into into an AAT exam uh, in here. So this is the way that we're going to track it and see, right, okay, well, well that and that is the same, uh, and that and that is the other part of the, the journal there. So that's 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 what the uh, the options titles are. So you don't, it isn't suspense in here. It's office furniture in here, and it isn't office furniture in here. It's suspense in here. Uh, so that's the how to get the names right. Total up the columns. So ten thousand four five four five zero, oh, and, and then this is this is one 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 seven four one seven six four. So the carry down must be eight six eight six in there to make these two totals at the bottom uh, equal to one another. And that's really just the answer. Uh, but, 10 marks it's not really worth worth 10 marks at all really is it um but it's a way to quickly get time and and, and marks in the exam so this is a a, um, a suspense count sort of tier count question really um you've got uh, an amount here uh, some uh, trial balance here not balancing so what's the what's the suspense uh, value and then post these journals in here um here's the original Trial balance balance, come up with the new balances, whether they're debits and credits. Um, should take you about five minutes for this one, so we'll come back in five minutes. Okay, so you've got about a minute left on this on this question.
Okay, so let's just um, do this, this question here. So in terms of the, the first bit there, um, we've got uh, debits of 199601 and credits of 200,827, so just put those into your notes there. In order to be able to sort of balance this up, we need a debit balance then of, of uh, 1226. So let's just put that in, shall we? And two two six in the debit balance there. Now we've got this one here, and, and so what we've got here is we've got our two journals, and we've got our original balances here. And the way to do this one is to set out tier counts. So I've got my tier counts for my office expenses here, which I start with my um, my original balance. The original balance there, though, is that's going to be an expense. It's less money um, less money going out to shareholders, or a reduction of money out item. So a debit out, a debit balance. So we've got debit there, and then we post in our uh, debit one on one debit two one two forty one and then another debit two forty one and that means that our carry down figure is going to be that we can retotal those numbers uh, so retotal them just make sure that we are accurate here yeah. retotal them so they're the same so we are happy that that's that's the right amount and so that's that's that one there two four four nine debit in here remember the, remember the values that brought down the, the, the actual trial balance value is the brought down value so so it all those credit 2449 there is a carry down it's the brought down value that's the um, that's the value of the account and then now that's one way now see underneath here i've done this actually in the account we watched one as accounting convention so i've just gone pluses and so debits as being plus and credits being minus and so that is the the, the uh the uh, accounting accounting sort of way where we're doing it, the accounting convention sort of side here i put this in here to sort of start with, them with my amounts i've got a, ba a bank one here as well so let me just there we go there's uh, the bank one and it starts off with an, an overdraft so that's quite good because i quite like that, that uh, um you know, so it, it sort of forces you to think about money and money out rather than dead click or anything else like that really so the bank overdraft so it's money going out so it's money out money out item is a credit and yeah, so we'll start with it we'll start with the credit figure of 1076 we post those two journals two two credits there and then our carry down figure is that debit of 1558 which would be a brought down figure so the brought down figure will be 1558 uh, credit so that's that one then we've got our fixtures and fittings in here same kind of thing um start off with our fixtures and fittings which is a money in item in there so that's a debit figure for that item there and then we post our, our uh, journals uh, journal 1655 so we got a debit then of 135903 now as soon as i said in accounting convention here in terms of the bank one here credits and minuses so we'll start off with a minus i did in two minuses and got that so that's the account balance there and the debit side starting with a debit um i did another the debit and you know, that's the total debit and the value of the balance i put the suspense account in here because i want to check my work later on so i'm going to leave the suspense account in here at 1226 at the, at the start and then when I post those two, which is minus one two six one two two six two two six in here, so I've got a suspense count of zero. Uh, and then I do the last one, which is the rent received in here. So I start off rent received. It's more money available to shareholders to go out, so it's a credit item, credit, credit figure for there. I post the credit of the rent received credit there, and that means that I've got a, a you know, debit carried down, a, 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 de a credit brought down, so a credit credit balance there 945 and again if I do it this in accounting convention where credits are minuses I've got to start off with minus of 602 I posted minus 343 and I've got a 945 uh, there so this would be how it would look in a, in a digital accounting system now why did I put all of those ones there on the, online because I wanted to sort these are the opening balances here or on, on, on these accounts here there's the journals in there but there's the closing balances and I wanted to make sure that the opening balances were equal to the closing balances on these ones. That's why I included the suspense account as well. And that meant because these journals balance, and because this then is the same as that one, then I know that I'm right. So that's how, how you can sort of check your work, really, as you sort of, all the ways you go along, you're sort of working out methods to, to sort of construct a, a, an approach that you can always then check your work and it'll be right. So that's the end of this question. This is a trial balance question here. So we've got some... Uh, current partially prepared trial balance here figures in here uh, you've got some amounts here uh, you're going to sort of create the whether they're debits or credits or what have you total up then the amounts in uh, the trial balance in after you've added those figures there to the opening or the partially prepared trial balance um, 
should be quite quick really this one um, you, you should be able to clear this in three minutes Okay, so let's just leave this over for another minute and then we'll be to the answer. Okay, so this is just a, a trial balance question here. So we've got how our, how our amounts here. So in terms of uh, VAT owing to HM revenue and customs, so money going out, and then so that'd be a credit. Sales return, so this is less money available to shareholders, less money to be able to go out, so that's a debit. Yeah, so reduction in the money out item is a debit. And drawings, a reduction in the amount that was available for shareholders as well. So another reduction in the money out item, that's a debit there. So those are the credits and debits in here. And then in terms of that total, so this was that we had a started off with a, a, in our partially completed trial balance 210,678 and a credit of 208,911. And we added on our debits and added on our credits to give us these totals here. And that balance is there. And that's the end of this, this question.